ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, your host for the evening. He's appeared on Comedy Central. Give it up for Frankie Del Pizzo. How are you? Welcome to Laugh Factory. How are you guys? Come on, it's Thursday night. We're in Las Vegas. Woo-hoo! There you go. You guys drinking, are you? Good for you. Drink, ma'am. The more you drink, the funnier my shit's gonna get, all right? That's all right. Plus, it's good for you now. Doctors have now proved that two alcoholic beverages a day is good for the cardiovascular system. So you know what that means? You people who are drinking are aerobicizing right now, huh? That's all right. Friends can ask you, hey, look good? What, are you Walker? Yeah, Johnny Walker. Because <laughs> that's what I like. I like a drink and know what I'm getting. You go to a nightclub, they got all these names on a chalkboard. You get it for good the drink specialist. You guys ever dealt with that? It's unbelievable. My wife and I, we go out drinking, right? I walk up to the bartender. Bartender says, you guys want to try some sand up your ass tonight? <laughs> well, we're not sure. I mean, you know, I thought scotch was an acquired taste. Could, could you imagine getting hooked on sand up your ass? What a night of drinking that's going to be, you know? And, and how many people are involved? Who's holding the funnel? That's all I want to know. I mean, I got pretty shitty aim after a few cocktails. I don't, I don't even play darts after three beers. I'll be honest, you know? Sand up your ass. Some of the drinks are way beyond that. You guys ever heard of a drink called a blowjob? You ever heard of that? You yeah. have. Let me tell you something. I go to a bar, order a blowjob, and I get one, I'm coming back. You know what I mean? That's, that's happy hour right there, isn't it, guys? Happy half hour, hell. <laughs> happy couple of minutes, whatever it takes. I'd be a VIP at that bar. Bullshit, I'd own that bar. I would. I'd, I'd call it Clinton's Pub. Wouldn't that be a great name for it? <laughs> Make it kneeling room only. What do you think? Huh? Yeah, there you go. It's nice being out here in Vegas, man. I love doing a little gamble. I'm just not good at it. The only machine I successfully clean out is the ATM. Anybody play that machine? Yeah, I got over three grand out of that this week. Yeah. I'd love to win just one time. I don't ever win. I'm always that guy standing next to the person that wins. That's what pisses me off, you know? I was working out here several years ago and I'm watching this guy gamble because that's what I do, you know? I got nothing to do. My show lasts 20 minutes a night. I got 23 hours and 40 minutes to kill. Yeah. And their town never sleeps. There's alcohol around the clock, so I aerobicize every day. See this guy playing a progressive slot machine. Now, this was years ago when the coins used to come out. Do you remember that? That was real gambling back then. You grabbed the coins, put them in, pulled a handle. That's the way it was. Now you hit that button, a little piece of paper comes out, right? Yeah, with that number on it to show what you have left of that $100 bill you put in there. Wow, a dollar and 47 cents. How the hell that happened? I've turned this into toilet paper, honey. Look at that. That was a hundred. Yeah. Saw a guy win huge money. He's moving all the coins around in this progressive slot. How much you got in there? He goes about 500 bucks. While I'm bullshit with him, he hit this thing for a million two hundred thousand dollars. I'd never seen something like that happen. It looks like security guards repel out of the ceiling, all right? They drop around them. They sign, they sign in forms. They're paying them off. So while his attention was diverted, you know what I did? Stole them coins out of the tray. That's what I did. There you go. It's funny. His friends go, what do you do? He says, I got to call home. He goes, honey, I just want a million two hundred thousand dollars. He goes, pack your bags. She goes, well, what climate is? I don't give a shit. Just get the hell out of my house. <laughs> Come on, guys, you gotta think about that one for a minute. I love that reaction. The guys kind of laugh and then look at their wife. That's not funny at all, is it, honey? No. Then you always see that one woman shaking her head. That's wrong. This guy's a real jerk. I can't believe that. And we know that's bullshit, because if the women won it, they wouldn't even bother to call our asses, would they, guys? No. There'd be no damn phone ringing. Be three days of wandering around the house. Have you seen your mother? We're wearing the same underwear for three days. That's what it's about, man. About being married and having money. I'm married twice myself. First one didn't work out. See where I cut myself shaving? <laughs> Thanks for getting that, sweetheart. That kind of scares me. See where my tie got caught in the rafter while I was changing a light bulb in the garage? You gotta be careful who you marry. You know, you marry the person and their occupation. Isn't that true? Yeah. My ex-wife's a very famous woman. You might recognize her name from television and movies. Also been in a couple of books. Her name was uh, Satan. That was her name. <laughs> Again, I know some of you want to laugh at that. You just can't right now because you might be out with her sister. It's a big family. 
<laughs> Very big family from what I'm learning. I had no idea, you know. I didn't get one of those magical marriages like my mom and dad. My mom and dad this past July just celebrated their 63rd wedding anniversary. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. My dad will be 84 in April. He doesn't do much anymore. He kind of sits on the couch and shakes, you know. Don't, don't feel bad. There's nothing wrong. He's just afraid of my mother. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. My mother's name is Carol, and my father's name is Frank! Frank, Frank! Ah, ah! She circles in, pecks at his neck, and flies out of the room. I'm like, should I leave the window open? Yeah, she'll want to eat around too. She'll come back. You know, all my friends, they got married young like me the first time. And I try, so I try and pass a little education on to the younger couples, you know? I don't believe anyone should ever be married before they are 35 or 40 years old. You know what? 60. That would be the best age, actually, really. Because you'll be dead before she gets old enough to hate you. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, because all these young guys get married 20, 21, 22. Do you know what the wedding vows say at the end? Till death do you part. Do you know when they were written? When you only lived to like 20, 21, 22. <laughs> What's the anniversary gifts, right? First one is paper, am I right, ladies? Fifth one is what? Wood, you know why? Because they give you a box to ship your ass out of there. That's what they did. You're usually dead after five years of marriage. That was a long-term relationship right there. But I believe marriages would stay together so much longer if we take a clue from the couples that have been married before us. You want to stay happily married? I'm going to tell you how you do it. You do not talk to each other. Do not talk, take a clue like my mom and dad. You know why they're happy? 63 years, my dad has been deaf for over 38 of those 63 years. <laughs> Sworn a hearing aid for 35 has never replaced the battery. My mom has no idea. <laughs> he just nods at her. Yep, you're right, honey, yes you are. Woo, chicken for dinner. I love chicken, don't I, honey? Yes, I do. Without the skin, because that's better for my heart, isn't it, sweetheart? And with, and with brown rice, because brown rice helps you go poopy, not white rice. White rice is binding. And with steam vegetables, because God forbid I should taste something before I fucking die. That'd be different, wouldn't it? <laughs> Take a clue from the old man. Watch the old man in the mall. Where is he? He's always behind her, carrying her pocketbook and her shopping bag, and he's just bitching to himself, isn't he? She's been in this mall for eight hours. Jesus Christ, how the hell does she do that? She hasn't peed once. That's amazing to me. Half an hour road trip, she's got to pee twice. I get her in the mall, she turns into a goddamn camel. You ever seen anything like that? She's growing a hump on her back, must be full of pee. That's what the hell it is. And she goes up to pay for her stuff. That's when you see an old man snap into action, gets over to the register, start doing the heel raise. You ever get the old man doing the heel raise? My dad does, he starts doing the heel raise. He's stretching them calves for a sprint to the car. That's what he's doing right there. Start jingling the car keys, am I right, ladies? Heel raising the car keys, then they come out. Next thing you know, that key starts digging in that right ear. You ever see that? Yeah, you think we're scratching. No, no, we're trying to puncture that eardrum for a quiet ride home, aren't we? Because we know as soon as we get in the car, questions are gonna come flying at us about the shit they tried on but did not buy. You ever taken that ride? You think the white pants I tried on, you think they made me look fat? I found out you look fat in all the pants you tried on. It's not the right answer to that question. Yeah, that was an out-of-body experience right there, man. <laughs> Had another one. I'm sitting on the couch. I got the remote in my hand. She walks over. She plops down next to me. She goes, what's on the TV? I said, looks like dust from here. <laughs> yeah. Everything went black. I don't remember much after that. I woke up about an hour later. Paramedic had a flashlight in my eye. Can you say your first name, sir? I know it hurts to sit. We found the remote control. <laughs> found some sand in there. Were you out drinking last night? Folks, you guys have been a lot of fun for me. Thank you very much. I'm Frank Del Piso.